Hello and welcome back to another episode of Warhammer Chaos uh, Gates. My name is Saiken and today we're fighting a fight on Borboa. Borboa 7 to be precise. We need to kill uh, all of uh, the enemies and find out more about that corruption. We're going to have uh, Jim as uh, the leader of our team. Then uh, Zoe, then Anders, and Linus, I think. Uh, I would like to put. Rugen. No. Uh, I would like to put. Zoe, the Purgitator, in slot 3, and Anders Sound in slot 2. Okay, perfect. So, Sabers. let's try to do that again. Because I like the ranged guys more on the right-hand side and the melee guys more on the left-hand side. It's personal preference. Um, same equipment as the last time, and we are starting our mission. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Why have you led us here, Inquisitor? There is no sign of strife on the comms. Look more carefully, Knight. The codes used are old, but they are a mark of an active plague cult. Of that, I have no doubt. If that is true, my brothers will make short work of them. We indeed will do exactly that for the Emperor, my friends. Kill all enemies. Oh, nice. Moving parts. I need a little train over there. With me, my brothers. Standing ready. Hail. So, since we're always getting our action points back once combat starts, I figured it might be clever to not move Chaos stirs within the shadows. too far in the first iteration. What is your will? Alright, Jim. Moves down here. Unleash me! Followed by Anders. Unleash me! On my way! Oh, we can jump down. Nice, 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 nice. That's good. I like what I'm seeing. Bloom rises, whatever that means. It seems like the war corruption. I am with you. Range damage dealer moves forward. May the powers protect us. <laughs> See you on. Enemy sighted. All right, this sounds like perfect opportunity for multi kill. How about we're going all the way up to here? How much further would we need to go? Uh, two fields potentially. All right, close to here. Yes, Commander. Listen, that's just not... I must sanctify my rounds. That's just not okay. Oh, my God. Zoe, you're... You my are a force of nature. into cover and I'm not 
sure if we want to do that because he can't stand in cover. We're instead going to shield ourselves. Taking position. The Emperor protects. Good. And we're moving into cover. Cool. Love it. Pinned. Okay. You cannot harm me. Overwatch. Cool. We're going to what test something will? new, which is teleporting. Right Hit here. <laughs> Hello. Well, guess what, heretic? It's time to meet your maker. No! Don't give up now! As ordered. Moving into the open. Deals four damage. Or, uh, Psy bolt. Oh yeah, we're going to let that bleed. Okay, well that didn't work out as well, potentially because they aren't cover. At your service. Armed and ready. Standing ready. We're moving in. Uh, back into cover. So good. Their flight is ended. As you will. Your command. Good. We're just going to run, 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 run. Just in case someone is coming up, the warp surge will rise. Almost at a hundred percent. Yes, Commander. Apathy Carriers yes, commander. moves up uh, first. Sure, what that means. Can we repair this? Um, yeah. Hmm. Pathetic! Okay, we now do know what that means. That was really bad. But that was me not uh, knowing the system well enough. Shadows. 
Gosh. I, th I thought it might be um, environment manipulation, but that was really poor. Enemy forces gain plus one reinforcement. Oh, that's okay. The Emperor lights our path. Moving out. Your orders? His wounds to heal. Good. Healing our battle, brother. My wrath is restored, brother. And move to here. Aye, sir. Moves to here. Moves to here. Yes, Commander. And we're moving to here. Good. End turn. Get the chaos. Attack! Just wait, just wait. Yes, we're charging forward. Firing Use the holy hand grenade. One of them fell. Justice. One of them fell down there. Interesting. What is your will? Praise the Emperor. Okay, before we're moving in there. We could move in with Jim and start hitting this guy, but we would take retalia uh, retaliation. Standing ready. With Let's flank over here. Another holy hand grenade. The wicked duels cannot stop you. Followed up by a nice little four strike. That's good. Very good. Can't really do that. Um, we're moving to here, and we're going to tank by putting our Aegis on. Flank over here would be not too bad, or alternatively, we're going to here, which I think is a better choice. Reinforcing our flank on this side. Here's a good spot. Pinned him, okay. Less than nothing. Any damage? Yes. Less than nothing. 
Our tank does exactly what the tank's supposed to do. Tanking. I am here to serve. All right, teleportation. In an instant. Followed by a nice strike, I like that. And a four strike. See them fall, brothers. Oh, we can jump over. Oh, it's yeah, really well, that changes everything. Flanking. For Titan. <laughs> All enemies have been cleansed. Good work, Commander. Well, they didn't uh, really stand a chance. I'm getting a bit of a better hang for just how overpowered uh, the uh, Grey Knights are. We killed all enemies, got enough servitors, and I don't know, we cleansed no corruption apparently. And if you get a lot of kills, like Zoe, then you're getting a promotion. So let's take a look at our promotion options. Uh, I will need to first of all go through the tree and then I'll summarize it for you. Okay, so we do have an interesting uh, set of trees, eight trees overall. Uh, top left hand side is the um, the Psylancer Discipline. Uh, so a lot of Psylancer weapons, more range for the Psylancer, uh, ignore damage penalty for partial cover, and more crit damage, which would be the weapon that we're currently using. Then we do have Emperor's Light, which really is a AoE ability that uh, blinds the enemy. I assume blinded means lower chance to hit. Um, and they can reduce the mutations, which doesn't uh, sound uh, all too bad. I like this tree up here. It's a grenade tree. You gain an extra grenade uh, slot, and then grenades that you uh, that you have can be upgraded with up to plus two ammo, which means, uh, if I'm correct, that means six. Uh, grenade charges uh, which would be gr uh, absolutely fantastic bigger area on top of it so that's not uh, not bad at all then we do have the sanctified kill zone which is kind of an overwatch type build uh, where uh, whenever you are within that uh, area they take more damage uh, they take afflictions and armor break happens as well uh, plus all of the auto abilities, the passive here is auto abilities gain an extra charge. Um, down here is, I would say, a support type of deal. I'm not sure if that is any good if you run this character as the ma main DPS, but 
um, you can essentially deplete the ammunition of your current weapon to give someone else a big fat damage bonus on their ranged attack. And there are ways of increasing ammunition. I've seen that already here, uh, down here for instance, no, somewhere. There, there was ammun uh, extra ammunition. So with a weapon with a lot of ammunition, uh, such as kind of that auto weapon that had five ammunition, um, you could uh, you could definitely oh yeah ammunition was over here yeah ammunition was over here so plus two ammunition at seven ammunition which means we're looking at a plus three damage on one weapon I'm not 100 percent sure if that is worth it um, but you also get more crit on top of it and activating this boon plus one damage per yeah well. You can get up to uh, you can get up to plus seven damage with what I'm knowing so far, which isn't bad. I mean that's that's nice, but it requires someone else to have ranged weapon capabilities. Then we do have down here the astral aim uh, ability shoots a target some uh, somewhere with 100% crit chance. Um, then if you crit you can choose to destroy body parts which sounds cool more crit damage and armor piercing um, ability on top of it as well as whenever a knight crits uh, there's a 50% chance to get an AP I like that that seems very very nice um, then we do have the bottom left which really is uh, the um, psychic onslaught uh, discipline I think that's for the psychic uh, weapons uh, where you can then create a psychic blast uh, range attacks with a psi cannon uh, these were the the other weapons that I was looking into with more damage and just more onslaughts so that seems to be AOE damage and then there is uh, the ranged weapon discipline which seems very plain vanilla basic but not bad at all because it is uh, giving you more ammunition and the ranged attacks also do have a crit chance which to me sound uh, a higher crit damage sorry and uh, the uh, auto ability here would be return fire whenever we're uh, getting shot at you can uh, return the fire Unfortunately, so let's let's get a uh, first immediate impression. Uh, remember the three buckets that I talked in episode one uh, about? I think that this character falls under the category of deal damage, so the p mainly in the second category. Neither uh, prevent damage nor a lot of battlefield control. I think that this here is a, a fantastic option for a pure damage dealer. So naturally I'm interested in doing exactly that, deal more damage. Um, and there's an option to go here into the auto cannon route. Um, that auto cannon uh, route then gives you um, yeah, no more uh, partial cover, more crit damage, more range. So that seems legit. Um, and the auto ability here would be enemy um, shoots a weapon, deals two damage to the target, cannot trigger overwatch. So um, the support uh, fire when an enemy is shot within the knight's weapon range, he will also shoot and deal two damage. Okay, so <clears throat> it's essentially an auto extra uh, shot that you get. So I would give that a good A tier. Uh, this Emperor's Light uh, seems kind of more like a suppression. This here uh, seems like an Overwatch. I think both of them will be solid B-ish tiers. Um, if I wanted to build this character into Battlefield Control, I think with the Emperor's Light, I could do exactly that. Um, but I'm not sure if I want to do that. The grenades seem great because uh, that is cover removal as well as a lot of damage. And the AOE damage of the grenades are just fabulous. So that's not bad either. And then uh, we, uh, we got that kill zone. I had good experiences with kill zones in um, Gears Tactics. So I think that's not... Uh, yeah, that's not to be scoffed at. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't know. I wouldn't want to build the character around it, but that's fine. The buffing, I think, is a little bit subpar from my first impression. I don't want to completely dismiss it, but don't think that uh, that will be the way to go. 
This here looks interesting. The Astral Aim uh, seems single target damage and this here seems multi-target damage. And um, if you think about it, uh, this here would be with a very specific, uh, with a very specific cannon. So it seems that we want to have a specific cannon and then we want to work our way towards this. This here is uh, basically blasters. Uh, the uh, Storm Bolters, this here is the Psychic Onslaught uh, version and these here are the Psy Lancers, so the three different uh, weapons. Um, you want to pick one of them, but you don't want multiples of them, so I'm not going to go through this area here. Although extra weapon, uh, extra ammunition might not be too uh, too bad, and the return fire might not be too bad as well. So let's think about builds. What um, is interesting is I like that multi explosion up here. Well, it seems like a decent option, and I gravitated towards this silencer um, silencer gun. So naturally, we might want to go like this and this and uh, use the Emperor's Light. The other alternative is go through here and up and go through here and up. Ignore that. Um, but we would have an Overwatch focused build instead of going with Emperor's Light. So I think after all of these considerations, I would like to go up here and then uh, take this and then take uh, the grenades. <clears throat> and we can always, once we have built into this, just skill into, say, um, extra ammo and return fire. That's not a big problem at all. Okay, so what are we getting? Emperor's Light uh, will um, give us a target blast of an area of three. Uh, all enemies are affected with blinding. 100% chance, two turns. Purge 50%, whatever that means. I think uh, the status buffs from them are taken away. And afflict the targets deal less damage with a ranged attack. So it's definitely a suppression type uh, type of build. And uh, over here, we're getting a bigger area, which is not bad at all. Over here, uh, the purge would be 100% uh, and we would go into the grenades, which sound fun as well, but I think we want to go to here first. I like the support fire, that sounds good. I like uh, the extra crit damage. I also like weapon range, that uh, it seems like you need a lot of um, weapon range. And the partial cover isn't bad either. So it seems like this is a very good uh, tree overall. Let's go with that uh, promotion for Zoe. And we got another promotion available, uh, which I will take a look at the tree. Okay, that is the Interceptor is an interesting class. You can build it melee and range, but the trees are all over the place. So let's this time start on the left hand side. This is the teleportation tree. And I think teleportation is their entire shtick. So they can teleport, they can even swap places, which is great. So that is battlefield manipulation at its finest, which I think is super helpful. I like the switcher redo. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. Then up here, they have even teleportation strike as a discipline, which allows you to select any tar uh, number of targets and then basically have an AOE melee attack. That deals more damage, uh, you can activate it uh, mm, uh, to get more, uh, even more damage, yada yada yada. And uh, teleportation boost seems cool, 50% uh, chance once per turn uh, to get an um, AP once you have teleported. Uh, which basically just means free AP, so this in itself already looks like a very solid core. Then you do have uh, the northern uh, section which gives you the ability to wheel silencer cannons, these are the heavy auto cannons. Um, I think that's not bad either. You could teleport somewhere and then just use the silencer thing. But 
for me, the, uh, the class chassis doesn't really scream ranged uh, teleportation details. Then you do have on the right hand side here a melee tree, uh, basically increasing your melee weapons passively. You do have a hammer hand tree, which is a uh, strike that uh, deals bleeding damage. Down here you do have a cleansing strike tree, which purges mutations off of them. So all of that is melee, 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 melee. Down here you do have, uh, I would say, a equipment slash, uh, slash defense tree, where you get uh, more armor, and uh, via Aegis shield that is, and uh, more war gear if you want. And down here you do have the support fire tree, which is strange that these two are so far uh, apart from one another. And also this here is quite far apart. I don't know, uh, they just build it that way. So. Now I want to build this character as a melee interceptor. I like the mobility of the character, so we're going to invest uh, right into that, which means we're going into uh, the switcher redo and the teleportation strike. Then afterwards potentially teleport boost so that we have the extra AP. Um, more damage on that ability isn't bad. Um, and this here is even more damage on the ability. So that in itself seems like a very solid, good core for the uh, for the abilities. Uh, the other option afterwards is that we're uh, going into uh, basically force strike and uh, hammer hand, and then take this into. Uh, media attacks. The media attack buffs are nice, but not as impactful. They are essentially 15% crit and then more crit damage. And uh, this here is something that I uh, think I'll skill as well. 50% chance that whenever you crit, you're getting another AP. So I think this here is for just normal attacking. This is a rock solid uh, tree. Uh, so we're going up here and we're going up here and once that is done Maybe we're going down to a purging strike and a little bit down here I don't know how many levels uh, we do have so for now what I know is we want to swap uh, or have the ability to swap that is and We want to teleport strike um, next turn next time we're going to take that and Either of these two is fine but I like the teleportation strike that seems like a really cool ability for enders good very good um, so what does the solar system tell us can't reach that never mind I clicked nonetheless That's a bit uh, the initial uh, bit of experience that we need to learn. Augmentation chamber is now operational. Start a new project. We definitely would want to do that. And I would like to upgrade our plasma reactor because that's really, yeah, there is a lot uh, to, to do. Research is still ongoing. Six more days. And Sancto. what does augmentation chamber mean? And this here gives us something if we return characters, but I don't want to do that. Where's the augmentation chamber ship status? Augmentation chamber. Gain one servitor per 10 days. Steady flow of them is important for the campaign. Okay, got you. But we're still okay with the servitors. It's interesting how they need to sacrifice themselves in order to make things work. Unchallenged. 
Well, thank you for letting me know about that. I think we're just going to wait here. Maybe here because that is more central so that we have a better chance of uh, that we have a better chance of reaching our destination. This poxwalker was one of the Imperial faithful afflicted with a strain of mutagenic virus. There is no doubt we are dealing with the work of the plague god Nurgle. This must be the bloom whispered of in those astropathic fragments. Within the carcass, I found a germ of some ancient power corrupted with a foul psychic resonance. This seed is used to spread the virus. Of that, I am certain. But it arrived to me damaged, and there is little else I can learn from it. In order to study how we might fight this plague, I must acquire one of these seeds completely intact. I can instruct your brothers on how to extract these specimens properly. Please ensure they pay attention. The Emperor loathes indolence. Let's not disappoint him. Okay, sure. This is Inquisitor Cartha Vakir of the Ordo Malleus. I am alumnus of Evixia Danica. Access code Clarion Magenta 11 17 21. I require immediate response from Titan. This is Grand Master Vardan Kai responding, Inquisitor. This act borders on heresy. The screams of the astropods you burned already reverberate through the warp. It is fortunate for you that I am prosecuting a campaign in the nearby Chimera system. I suggest you explain yourself, and quickly. Grandmaster, I have commandeered the Baleful Edict. We face- You have seized a Grey Knight Strike Cruiser. As is my right. I have foreseen dire omens for this sector. Already Nurgle's Poxwalkers roam free. Oh, indeed. I'm surprised an agent of your pedigree is not equipped to deal with such lesser threats of chaos. Agravain, perhaps you can clear up this nonsense for me. My lord, he fell in battle during our last campaign against the Cadium cult. We had been returning to Titan for repairs when this Inquisitor intervened. Ah, Brother Ektar, that is sorry news. I trust then that you have appointed one of our brothers to act in his stead. Well, speak up then, Commander. What say you to this Inquisitor's story? Intriguing. However, the galaxy is full of unsolved mysteries. I am confident these poxwalkers are the symptom of a much greater cancer. I only need a little time to conduct further research. Very well. I am not in the habit of second-guessing those under my command. That is, until given a good reason. I will leave the Baleful Edict in your care. You have my thanks, Grandmaster. But there is yet another reason I desire to speak with you. As steward of the Armory of Titan, I had hoped you could release further assistance. Don't thank me yet. I will give you 60 Tertaean solar days to prove this threat warrants the deployment of an entire strike force. Battle-worn as it is, Strike Force Cyphos could be put to good use in several campaigns across the galaxy. Any further requisition from my arsenal will have to be earned. But I... To... After each Grand Master's report, you can spend your requisition to unlock and upgrade armor slots. The resource slot gives you access to the new knight reinforcements, servitors, grimoires, and other resources at the end of a mission. Hmm. This guy looks way uh, less um, friendly uh, than the spokesman in XCOM. You can only unlock or upgrade each slot once per report. Slot upgrades increase your chance of accessing more and better equipment and resources. All right, Knight Requisition. What does that do? Upgrade your Knight Requisition from Titan. Increased chance of Grey Knights at higher starting ranks. 
Um, Armory of Titan, wide variety of master crafted ranged weaponry. Upgrading that, increase the chance of higher ranged weapons. Higher melee weapons. Uh, upgrading armory will increase your chance of more powerful suits of Mastercraft power and terminator arm. Okay, we are taking that. And war gear. Wide array of grenades, servo skulls, and passive items. That sounds good as well. I don't think that we need higher knights at the moment. We're fine. Um... We had plenty of melee weapons. Maybe we're going for a couple of ranged options because every single one of them has a ranged weapon, even if they have a melee weapon. Reward chance, always, always, always. Interesting. Okay. Are you satisfied with your request, Commander? Sure. Okay, within the uh, carcass I found a psychically infused seed, a germ of some ancient power. It was damaged. Seed extraction unlocked. Good, yeah, we talked about that. This here would need pox for their seat. Uh, over here, the plague surrounds the world. Um, I believe we can penetrate the shields and protect and uh, project my psychic powers onto the battlefield. Warp field penetration. I like that. So that seems like. What do we have here? Target uh, target an ally to heal. Knights and. Uh, servitors teleport to any visible location. Ooh. More visible enemies are affected by immobilized. Oh. All night gain 50% crit chance. Ooh. Okay. Hmm. What does this here mean? Cost in seeds. Okay. This here looks awesome. Um, I think we're just going to start with that. I, that looks really, really good. You have my attention. It is not so. I need the seeds if we must. The grain. We know that I will not. Yes, you've taken enough of my time. Okay, we can talk Commander, with all of them. I'm clean. Waiting for new input. Risk factors remain safe. Affirmative. I must attend to repairs. Come, let us talk over what trouble. Besides a car cake, the grand. Perhaps there's some pe by all me. All tech the ancient. Yes, assured. Whatever. But I hope that aids you. Good. We figured all of that out. What I haven't figured out is. Where are the new missions? I'm not sure, are we wasting time? New Bloom activity. Three new eruptions. Okay, if we move to here, that's half of it gone. It's almost all of it gone. The game doesn't make it very easy for us to reach multiple systems. I spawn at the exact opposite sides. So this here is Servitors, which is not bad. This here is Grimoires for more research. 
This is... Requisition. What is, what is requisition? Is this that? Yeah, okay, so about those would be upgrades. I see. <clears throat> I would like to go to here in the hopes of afterwards being able to reach, but that's potentially not going to happen. Who knows? Let's give it a try. We need more travel speed because more travel speed means more missions. Good. If we eliminate all seat carriers, that will uh, give us substantial benefits. And if we go with only three units, that'll give us even more substantial benefits. You know what Saiken is going to do. We're going to land with three units. Not even a question. Um, so yeah, that's it for today. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Appreciate uh, you being here. If uh, you want to be the fourth unit, click that like button. Elsewise, I need to deploy with only three. Take care and have a good one. Bye-bye.